Hey, how's it going guys? Just thought I'd take a second to make a quick video to show you a few of the steps that I've used in my bluing process now. As I've done it a while, I've got a little more refined, tried a bunch of different techniques, and this is the one that's working the best for me right now. But anyway, just sit back and watch. Uh, I'll try to make the video short, straight to the point. I'll show you some before and after video of the gun that I'm doing. Okay guys, and just in case you're curious what the kitchen of the world's coolest wife looks like, it looks like this when I'm right in the middle of rebuilding some guns. So that's what I got going on in here right now. And there's the focus of this video right there on the table. All right, here's a shot at the rear of the rifle, the cocking handle. Okay, now here's a look at the recoil lug and the barrel on this gun. As you can see, it's got a lot of rust. So what I'm going to do is try to remove that, and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, guys, and here's my advice of stuff to do before you ever start stripping this, is all of this kind of residue and gunk, in as far as lapping the barrel, cleaning the barrel, cleaning inside of this tube here, Get all that done before you ever strip the bluing off. It's just one less mess on top of another mess. Then when you go back through it, you can clean it again. Okay, now right here is what I'm going to clean the metal up with. As I've worked with these over and over, these scotch brite pads work so much better than sandpaper. I can't imagine why I wasn't using them to start with. But just pick you out a place on the metal, it doesn't matter where you start and just start rubbing it and you can see just how quickly that is taking that old surface rust off just a second and I'll give you a close-up look look how shiny that is there's the other side of the barrel so that'll let you know this stuff will really really take it off fast so what I'm about to do is go over the entire barrel to action with the scotch brite pad and then we'll go to the next step alright and if you do run across a place that is really deeply rusted the way these two spots here are. What I would do, get a piece of coarse metal sandpaper, I always use good paper, and try to knock that off. It's just a buildup of rust, and then go over the whole thing with the scotch brite pad. All right, and that's what it looks like after taking it off with the sandpaper and going over it with scotch brite. You'll see it's all discolored. That's no problem, that's where I'm stopping right now. All right, when you get it to this point, just take your shop towel and wipe it down. Don't worry about using acetone. Don't use anything. Just wipe it clean. It doesn't have to be sterile. It doesn't even have to be degreased. Just wipe it down, and we're going to get ready to start bluing. All right, and here's the bluing solutions I'm going to use today. This is the Oxfo Blue Liquid and the Oxfo Blue Cream. The liquid gives it a really nice, even dark finish. The cream gives it more of a nice blue finish. So what I do, I combine the two. I go with a few coats of the liquid first, then I finish with the cream, and the cream kind of evens everything out when you get through with it. Okay, now in my other video, the way I heated the metal was I used hot water, which worked fine, but for the Oxfo liquid, this seems to work the best. I just set it on here. As you can tell, that coal is hot. Let it sit on there for just, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds. You're trying to get it hot, you're not trying to get it to the point that it's basically where you can't touch it. You want to still be able to touch it. There are guys that get it just insanely hot. But this right here will get it hot enough. Just put it on there. You're just trying to get the metal nice and warm. Then when you get it nice and warm, that's when you start applying the bluing solution. Okay, I've got the metal warm. I'm fixing to pull it off of the stove. So what I do now is take a very small patch of this, use the liquid, and pour it on the patch till it saturates it. You don't, I, the reason I use a small patch is so I just don't waste it. Then what you do, there's, there's what you're using. Just start wiping it. And as you do it, just wipe it in. Just continue to wipe it in and you'll see it start darkening. You'll also see this rust on the rag. This Oxfo Blue, not only does it blue and help protect the material, it also removes the old rust. So once I get finished on this side and it's rusty, I'll take and put a little more on. Use the other side. And if you have a rusty spot, just keep polishing over it. 
I know that looks very uneven. It's just the first coat. Okay, now give that coat about 30 seconds to dry on. Then once it does, just take you a paper towel and wipe it all off. Just wipe it down and get the excess off. You're just trying to make sure there's no buildup solution left on the metal. Now once you get it to that point, get you a piece of 4 out steel wool. Don't use the scotch Brite anymore. It'll take the old blue up. Take a dry piece of steel wool and lightly buff it. And it'll start evening it out and give it a little sheen. Go over the entire thing. Buff it off. You're just building layers on top of layers. If there's a place that looks funny, don't worry about it. Just continue to buff it. And as you apply, keep applying this stuff, it will even out. Now once you get to this point, just wipe it back down with a dry towel and reheat it and go do another layer. All right, now here's the part after three layers of the Oxfo Blue li liquid and polishing in between each layer. So what I'm going to do now is reheat it and I'm going to apply some of the Oxfo Blue cream. Okay, now the cream here is what gives it the nice blue color. So what I'll do is just I knocked a little hole in it. Just pour it directly on it. Once this stuff is contaminated, you don't want it getting back in the bottle. So I just put it on there like that. I use my fingers and just work it in. As you're working in, especially with it being warm, it's going to dry fairly fast. But just work this stuff into the metal and let it set for a minute. You don't want to let it get completely dry. Work it in. And when you feel that it's about to start drying, go ahead and wipe it off then. Now after doing that, go back over it one more time. After drying it off, go back over it one more time with the steel wool. I still wool it right back down. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it is starting to give it a slight blue color. Then reheat it and apply the cream one more time. And then we'll get to the last step. And there it is with all the new parts. I'm fixing to reassemble it. All right, guys, there's the finished product. You can see the cock and lever, you can see the gun. Just a second, and I'll show you the barrel. There you go. I think you'll agree it's much better than it was. And I'd like to give a little shout out to my friend Scott Fortress for letting me use his gun to make this video. Hey, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Just a couple of thoughts I wanted to share with you. Uh, I know you saw me do what I did in my wife's kitchen, but I think something that's worth mentioning is be a man. Don't don't let that woman tell you what to do in her own in your own house. Grab your nuts. If you have to call her dirty names, call her dirty names. You do what you do. You're the man. She's a woman. You fix your guns. You use your archer equipment. You come in there and blow boogers on the counter. It's your damn house. You do anything you want. Screw what she says.